Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? So I'm watching the Super Bowl and um, I wanted to, to do a video real quick. I was going to make a video tonight cleaning um, my kitchen again. But you know what? I decided I am exhausted today. It's been a very, very busy day. And so I am going um, to get ready for bed, which I'm in my pajamas right now. And I thought, well, while I'm sitting here watching the fourth quarter of the game, I would be able to um, do a video instead of a cleaning video on my singleness and um, what God has really been speaking to me this weekend um, on being single. So um, I've been watching some YouTube videos on being single and um what is right in the eyes of god and what the bible says you should do as a christian woman um if your spouse divorces you and um that is one thing that i definitely definitely want to do is follow christ and um so i've really been told by god to not date um to wait on my ex-spouse to come back and um decides he wants to remarry maybe the girlfriend he already has or someone else then um at that point according to god's word i feel like i would be released to uh date and then remarry also um in the meantime um i thought i was married to a christian man and so i want to continue um, with my faith, even if I was wrong and I did not marry a Christian man. So, um, I've been watching a lot of videos on what to do in my singleness as a Christian. And, um, what I have found out is, um, a couple questions. And the number one question I should be asking myself is, are you thriving? Um, and what does thriving mean? Um, and then why do you feel like you need a man um survival is not thriving a lot of the videos i've been watching have been talking about survival um single moms are having a really really hard time just surviving let alone thriving and um god really wants us to thrive he wants us to thrive in our relationship with him he wants us to thrive on our own, especially if we are divorced and it was unwanted um, or unexpected or it was a decision that the man had done. As a single woman, God wants us to thrive in our relationships. And um, he created that man for us. Go, 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 go. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Oh, wow. Go Chiefs. <laughs> Go Chiefs. Okay. So, um, you know, God wants us to survive um, and, and thrive, you know, in our relationships. And he says, why do you need a man? Well, you need a man um, because God has intended every woman to to have that spouse. Um, he created woman from a man and he said it is not good for man to be alone. It doesn't mean that it's good for man to go sleep with whoever he wants to sleep with or um, divorce his wife to go be with someone else. He's saying that he created a certain specific woman to be that helpmate for that man. And um, I honestly believed in my marriage, I was supposed to be that helpmate for my spouse. There were so many times as a Christian, um, my husband would really think or say something that made me feel like I was made just for him. Um, and he would be, hold on, they're about ready to get a touchdown. Incomplete. Ooh. 
Um, so, um, there was a lot of times where my husband would say something like, um, you're encouraging me or, or, you know, I don't know how you have that faith or something like that. And I would always come up with really good ideas of helping other people, doing things for family members or something like that. And, um, hold on one more second. <laughs> You guys, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be doing this video in the middle of a football Super Bowl game. Come on, Chiefs. You gotta do it. Go, go, go. Walk on in. Hallelujah. Amen. Touchdown, Kansas City. Woohoo! All right. Wow. Okay. 34 27. Let's keep going. Keep going. Fourth quarter. Nine minutes left. We got this. God's gonna give it to us. Um, I live in Kansas City, so if they win this, we're, we're having a parade on Wednesday. Um, fireworks will be going off soon. You may hear them on this video. Okay, um, so, um, you know, God wants us to have that man that he created for us. And, you know, when I went into my marriage with my ex-husband, um, I really thought he was that Christian man for me. I really thought we completed each other. Where he lacked, I was strong. And when I was lacking, he was strong. And um, I really do feel like God spoke in my ear. I heard him audibly say, marry that man. And so I did. And we got pregnant with my uh, nine-year-old son. Uh, on our wedding night and um, he completed our family and uh, 10 years of our almost 10 years of marriage and I would say probably eight of that was really really good um, something has changed in my ex-husband since the pandemic that's all I'm gonna say I chose my spouse I was single I was happy and um, on my notes here I say your children the choice of the father that you have chosen to have children with. Um, that was my choice. I chose him to be the father. He is going after a motion right now against me in our divorce. And I chose him. You know, um, I wanted to have a family with him. I chose him to be a stepfather for my children. I chose him um to be a father of our son our nine-year-old that we have together and i thought he was going to be a great father a great christian man for my boys and when i found out i was pregnant with our nine-year-old i thought oh he's going to be the best father ever um what he's done in our divorce and with my other two children I would say I made a mistake. I made a mistake um, trusting that he would do what's right and follow God in every decision he made. I always thought he was going to be the spiritual leader for our family, and I made a mistake. Um, you know, I need, as a mother, to equip my children so they can grow up and they can be the father that their children deserve and to make those right decisions for their family and their wives. Um, that is one thing. I have three boys, you guys, and my number one goal in my life as a mother is to prepare them for being a father. My oldest is a father, and I am telling you, he is a great father. He is a better father to his daughter than his father was to him, and he's really good with um his daughter's mother and i want to say i have a part in that i raised him pretty much on my own and i want to say that i brought him up to know what a father should do and i do want to say because of my bad choices in men i want to say that because of my faith and that i really believed that god gave me my ex-husband that even 
my oldest's stepfather was a good choice. Um, I don't want to think of it as a mistake. I want to think of it as he walked away from God, not me. And over time, everybody will be able to see that because I am remaining strong in my faith with Christ. <sighs> so do you think you need a spouse? Uh, do you think life would be easier with a spouse? Um, you know, in a way, yes. Um, I need that helpmate. God wanted me to have that helpmate. He wanted my husband to have that helpmate. Um, he wants us to find someone as a Christian who is also a Christian. Um, today in church service, we talked about the order. It is God, husband, man, and wife, woman, and then children. There is a order. God created an order um, from the very, very beginning. That's why woman was made out of man, was there was a order. And um, God says, this is the order that a marriage should be in. This is where your priority should be. And if you are out of order, then you are out of order with me first. And um, everything else will crumble. It will be divided. And, you know, I kind of feel like that is why I'm divorced. God has separated me from the chaos from my husband not being in order with his priorities. He did not have God first in his life. Do you want your kids to have your life? What are you modeling for them? Um, these are questions that I wrote down for myself um, watching YouTube videos. Um, and it just made me start thinking as my singleness. Do I want my kids to make the same mistakes as me? No. I want them to put God first in their life. Um, as my boys, I want them to be able to be those godly men that I'm looking for in my life. Um, and I want them to be able to know how to treat their wives and um, their children and how to love them and be committed in a relationship and seek God first. And as a mother, what am I modeling for them? I'm modeling my faith. I'm modeling, um, you know, my husband wants to divorce. I'm going to let him divorce me because I don't want to be unequally yoked. I don't want to be in a relationship or a marriage where I'm unequally yoked. <sighs> um, one of the things that I um, have been learning from a pastor on um, YouTube, very well-known, popular Christian um, Bible preaching pastor, is you need to talk to your kids about relationships and sex. Um, you don't want the world teaching them. Right now, the world is teaching kids it's okay to divorce they're saying do whatever you want to do it's okay to have fornication look at porn have sex before marriage do drugs sleep around beat up your wife the world is saying that this is okay to ignore your children be on your phone all day don't pray with them don't teach them about god and the world is saying this for the very first time. Um, it's just being accepted, like worldwide. Um, and it's really bad in the United States of America. Um, lawlessness is abounding. And so you want your children to learn from you about... He's out of bounds. Oh my gosh, I thought the Eagles were going to get it. A touchdown, and he was out of bounds, right at the pole. Wow, we were lucky on that one. Um, so, you guys, touchdown, Eagles, darn it. This game, you guys, this is a good game. I mean, at least we're doing good, and there's five minutes left. Um, 35 to 33. They go for the two. They could tie, and then we go into overtime. So I think that's what we need to do. Um, okay. Um, so you need to talk to your kids about the relationships. You don't want the world to teach them. 
um, all that bad stuff. Um, and you want to teach them definitely from, um, you know, the relationship side, you want to teach them what God says in, in his word. Um, I want to watch the Eagles real quick. Walk him. He's in. Darn it. It's a tie. This is a good game. Okay, Mahomes is going to step it up. We've got five minutes um, to get a touchdown. <laughs> it's happened before in two, so I know we can do it. But once they go for their kick, they're going to win. Too bad, too sad for the Chiefs if that happens. Um, I love football, you guys. I love watching the game. I love supporting the Kansas City Chiefs, but... You know, if they lose, it's okay. It's just a game. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, you know, you want to talk to your kids. You don't want them to learn from friends at school. You don't want them to learn from um, the wrong people. Um, you don't want them to learn. Um, you want to teach them about how to protect themselves. Um, from diseases and from um, things of the world. There are a lot of bad people out there. There's rape, there's um, molestation, um, and you want to protect them um, and tell them, you know, don't let anybody touch you there. Don't, you know, have sex before you're married. You want to teach them what's right. Um, they may make mistakes, and it's okay. Um, if your children make mistakes, um, I was not perfect and I was saved when I was five. I can tell you guys that much when it came to relationships, I've sinned a lot and, um, God has given me grace and I'm trying to fix it. I'm trying to make things better. That's why I married a Christian man, um, was because I did not want to make that mistake of marrying the wrong man again, but I'm divorced again and um, you know I want to go back to that first question that I talked about at the very beginning at the very end of this so don't let me forget um, single moms have so much emotional and um, they're trying to survive but they need to know about relationships um, so, and then again, I'm talking about the order of priorities. There is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So then there's the God, the husband, and the children. It's the Trinity. It's the three in one. And that is how it is supposed to be in marriage. When you marry a Christian man, there's God, husband, and children. And under that marriage covenant with Christ, you are one. It says in the Bible, two shall become one. That spouse is supposed to leave his father and mother and cling. That means become one with his wife. And uh, it says, let no man separate. Um, um, if you are out of order, you are allowing Satan and the thoughts of evilness, of sin. Um, look at that pornography. Cheat on your wife. Do your alcohol or your drugs. Um, and leave your family. File for divorce. Those thoughts will come in and um, um, and you are out of order. Then th those things will happen. And, um, you know, if you have God first, he will protect you. And he will protect your marriage from falling apart. And I just love that. Without God, we wouldn't have the Son, Jesus Christ. And without Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins... We would not have the Holy Spirit. Um, it has to be in order. This is a big one that I wrote down. Do not have fear of past mistakes. You guys. <laughs> Going into my marriage with my ex-husband, um, I had a fear that this would happen. I kind of knew. Um, he had his old self. And... 
you know, I know that that was a possibility of this happening, my divorce happening. Um, I knew after marriage that my husband didn't love me. I knew three weeks after we were married, he didn't love me. Um, I knew that, um, he would rather be with AA and his alcoholic friends than he would with his family and his spouse and his wife and his children. And, um, you know, um, I lived in a marriage where I was unhappy for nine years. So I am okay with the divorce. Um, and it's all because he's not um, equal and one with Christ. If he was right with Christ, he'd be right with his wife. And, um, you know, that is one thing that I knew um, from the very beginning of our marriage that um, something was off. I wrote down here, you try when you value something. My favorite quote about relationships is from Steve Harvey, <laughs> of all people. He says, when a guy likes you, he will move mountains for you. You wanna know how I knew my ex-husband didn't love me? He wouldn't move mountains for me. I knew it as soon as we were married. It's like he didn't try, he didn't care, he didn't love me, and he never, did anything for me that moved mountains for me. There was a couple times when he tried, but he would just kind of halfway do it. It didn't feel like it was coming from his heart. It felt like maybe it was coming because I was nagging. Um, or he thought that it was going to be special and it wasn't special because he didn't know me. Um, he didn't try to get to know me. He didn't try to date me or do anything nice for me as far as um, trying to keep that spark alive in our relationship. So, um, you know, that was a big red flag from early on in our marriage. I wrote down smile, shoot your shot. This is if I start dating again. I need to start smiling some more. And I think that will come with happiness of being single and being one with Christ. Smile um, and shoot your shot. You know, tell someone you like them. If you like them, don't be af afraid to um, say, hey, I like you and see where it goes, you know. Um, but I'm not there yet. I really would like to, um, you know, follow God's will. And I, I really want to stay committed in my marriage. It says, um, when you start dating, be where you want to meet people. If I want to meet an alcoholic, then I'll go to AA. Okay. I met my husband at church. That's where I want to meet my husband is at church. Um, I want to definitely make sure that he's a Christian. And that's why I say I really, really thought my husband was a Christian. That's where we met. Um, something that I've learned on the internet, um, on YouTube uh, this weekend, everyone changes every five years, men and women. They change every five years. And um, so, you know, you gotta be able to give grace in that relationship, that other person changes. Um, now, I would have been okay with my spouse changing in our marriage if he would have communicated with me. There's no communication. Um, we never had any honesty. Um, and no communication. We never prayed together. We never talked about it. We never worked out our problems together. And it was a huge mistake. There's a lot of times when I would feel bad and go, go, go. Uh, three minutes left, you guys. It's 35, 35. So that's good. Um, you know, there's a lot of times where I felt like, um, I just felt like I was unloved and unwanted in my marriage, and I never said a word to my husband. That is my own um, regret that I have, is I was never honest with my spouse. 
Get rid of it. Oh my gosh! Go, Mahomes, go! <laughs> oh, he's going to get hurt. He's running. He's got an injured ankle and he is running. I hear my neighbors yelling. <laughs> They're all like a delay. So funny. Whew. They must be ahead of me because they're screaming next door. Or maybe they're behind me. They were yelling, go, 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 but I'm already on the next play. Two minute warning. The game's over. 35 35. So hopefully we'll win. Um, okay. So I was just talking about um, being honest with my ex spouse. But the next thing I have right here is be honest with yourself. No excuses. Um, I made a lot of excuses in my marriage on why I felt the way I did. I was so depressed, you guys. Um, I can tell I was so depressed because I am now losing my weight. I am now feeling so much better in my life. I am focusing on God. I'm reading the Bible every day. I'm in prayer on my hands and knees. I'm praying for my marriage. I'm praying for my ex-husband. And... and um, I'm not hiding in my faith anymore. Um, and I did. I did hide in my faith when I was married. I could tell you I wanted my husband to be that spiritual leader. I wanted him to be on fire for Christ. I wanted him to show me that he was that leader, and he never did. And I was never honest with my myself. I made excuses. Um, Something I've never really said publicly, but my um, ex-husband, um, back in junior high, was diagnosed um, a little slow. And so um, I made excuses a lot on that's how he is, and he doesn't understand what I, I understand um, as far as the Bible. And I thought it was a mental capacity. And um, God has made it very clear through my divorce that no, it wasn't a mental capacity. It is, um, he knows exactly what he's doing. Um, it is a lack of faith problem um, that was in our marriage with my ex-husband. So hiding in my faith, I cannot hide in my faith any longer. I need to stand up for what's right, stand up for what I believe in and stand up for my faith. It has not changed just because my husband filed for divorce. If you are um, physically, emotionally, or sexually um, traumatized in a relationship, it needs to be addressed in order to heal. This is something that I struggled with in my marriage. Um, there was sin going on in our marriage, and um, it was never addressed. And it should have been. And it should have been me bringing it to my husband's attention um, that it was bothering me. It was really bothering me deep down inside. And I was never honest with him, like I said. How do you stop caring about someone that is not available? Um, this is what I am having a problem with right now in my singleness now. I loved my husband so much. I wanted a godly marriage, a godly husband. Like I said, I really thought I heard God say, marry this man. And I really feel like right now God is saying, wait, be patient for this man. And he's with someone else. He's not available. I cannot get myself into another relationship with anyone else who is not emotionally, spiritually available, physically available. Um, my care group at church has asked me, do you want to start dating again? And um, I'm not available right now. 
I'm not, because I still love my spouse. Mm, we missed it. And there's a flag. A flag on the eagles? They're all pointing. Chiefs are pointing to the eagles, so we'll see. One minute, 48 seconds, 35, 35. Holding. He knew it. <laughs> the guy on the Eagles is like, Ugh. so. Um, so how do you uh, stop caring about someone who's um, not available? You know, my um, ex-husband is not available. He's not available to talk or communicate with me regarding our child. He's not available spiritually to understand where I'm coming from. And he's got a girlfriend, and she's moved in. So he's not available. He is doing his own thing. <sighs> Spiritually, I just don't um, know what is the right answer to that, you know? Um Valuable. Don't base decisions on feelings. I did that in my marriage. <laughs> I based a lot of my decisions on my feelings. I could not figure out why my spouse could not understand me. <laughs> he would say all the time, I don't understand you. You made me say this. You made me do this. Um, and I would not understand him because I just could not understand why he couldn't communicate, why he couldn't understand me. And, you know, we went over the five love languages and we went through marriage counseling and I just felt so close to him and one with God during those times. They're letting the time clock go, so I don't know. They are like on the five yard line, if even that. One minute. They can run one more play and then kick if it doesn't work. Lamar Hunt is just up. He's on his feet. Oh, come on, guys. You guys are going to get my live reaction of this Chiefs game if they can get this. Um, you're not responsible for his actions. Confess your sins. Pray. Choose love. I want to be able to tell my boys I did everything I could to save my marriage. That is what I want to get out of being single. They're setting up for a field goal. If he does not get this, the game is tied. 35-35, we'll go into overtime. If he gets this, we win. Let's go. Butker. Let's go, Butker. Don't miss this. He just missed the last one. <laughs> I think it wasn't the last one, but the one before that. He hit the pole. Whoops. <laughs> if he wouldn't have hit that, we probably would have won the game anyways. This is so scary to leave it up to him. They got it down to 11. Eleven seconds left. Oh my gosh! And he's gonna try to get this field goal to see if he can win the Super Bowl for the Chiefs. No pressure here. That's okay. <laughs> no pressure. Oh wow! These games like this give me a heart attack. <laughs> Are they gonna win this game or not? Let's get it over with. So I can finish this video. This is a 36 minute video. Oh my gosh, here we go. Timeout, 11 seconds, field goal, and he's getting ready to kick. Oh dear God, for the lead, for the win. Touchdown, Kansas City! Woo-hoo! We won the Super Bowl. They're 
38, 35, eight seconds left. Whew. Let's see. Can they, can the Eagles do something in eight seconds? I don't know. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be so funny if they did. <laughs> so, um, everybody's screaming. I got, you guys, I live in an apartment. It's kind of like a, a, a duplex. And um, we got fireworks going off. We got neighbors screaming. Um, usually they're really annoying and they're blaring the music. Boom, 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 boom. These neighbors over here today were fighting. Um, just thought I was going to have to call the cops. Can't stand it when they're fighting. Um, but I'm a single mom. This is what I have. I'm forced to live here. So I'm being grateful for what I got. And I'm grateful that I can watch the Chiefs game and I have internet tonight. Because um, I do need to pay my bill. <laughs> Six seconds. Eagles has the ball. They get one more play. So, um, I want to go back to the first question, like I said. Are you thriving? And, um... Thriving means, are you happy? Are you happy? Are you um, feeling like you're accomplishing something? As a Christian, thriving would be doing God's will. Do I feel like in my singleness, I am doing God's will? And um, this was a big question for me. And I'm going to answer it. Just one second. Four, three, two... One, ah! game is over, and the Kansas City Chiefs just won the Super Bowl. Woohoo! Oh, how did we pull that off? I don't know. Wow, Andy Reid is like, whoo, I can breathe. Oh. So happy. Can you guys hear the fireworks going off? It's crazy. So, um, how do you thrive as a single mom? And do I feel like I'm thriving in my singleness? Yes, I do. That's why I'm happy again. I feel like um, no longer do I have that evil presence in my home. No longer do I feel the stress of having unequal oh my homes and Kel kelsey's hugging that's so sweet um i no longer have that feeling of being unequally yoked with my spouse because now god's my my husband and i'm still in covenant in my marriage um i'm just waiting on my spouse to um become a Christian again <laughs> or um, come you know for the first time to know Christ um, and, and for him to do what's right and what God has commanded as a spouse and um, you know I feel loved by God and I don't feel like I did anything wrong in my marriage I did everything I could do as a submissive wife as a mother to my children um, and as a wife for my husband I really do feel like I could do anything for him. We should go outside. Or I'll just look out the window. That's my front porch. I don't know if I could... If I could hear or see fireworks from the back porch or not. Let's see. Oh, you guys, fireworks. 
Fireworks! Yay! Fireworks! Kansas City! I love Kansas City. Yay. Can you guys hear people screaming? They're all around me. Fireworks. I love living in Kansas City. It really sounds like a war zone. Okay, I'm going back in. So, um, My cat. I want to make sure she's inside. I left the window open if you want to go see what's going on. You want to go sit inside the window? My neighbors are blaring their music. Just like I thought. you guys it's amazing um to be in kansas city tonight <laughs> we're gonna have a uh parade on wednesday and kansas city is gonna be shut down so i wonder if i'll be working um because they will um shut down the whole city and the whole kansas city greater kansas city area so um yeah it's exciting um and i'm loving my life as a single mom um you know, the number one thing for me is I want to do what's right. I want to do what God has commanded me to do. And so, um, yeah, you guys, um, I want to end this video. But these are some questions that I really, really um, think you guys should be asking yourself when it comes to your relationship um, and your divorce. Um, I really love that... I have YouTube that I can um, talk to you guys about. I can um, research, you know, and that I, I can listen to pastors. Um, and there are pastors that will talk about marriage and relationship and what does God say. And, um, you know, I have gotten into the word myself. Um, I've read it myself. And God says, love your, your wife as um Christ loves the church. Love your husband as Christ loves the church. And I think to myself, man, God loves me so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for me. What is that? That's sacrifice. And I need to be able to sacrifice for my spouse. And if God doesn't want me to be with my ex-husband because we are unequally yoked, I know that God's going to send that godly Christian man in my life that I'm seeking. Um, you know, what I, I really, really think is I chose my husband. Um, when I first met my husband, I actually had three other guys fighting over me at the same time who all went to my church. And um, I chose my husband because God told me to. You know, I got to listen to what God's telling me to do. It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake that I'm divorced. It's not a mistake that I'm talking to you guys right now on YouTube. And it's not a mistake that the Kansas City Chiefs just won the Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. You guys, I'm cracking myself up again. I'm sorry. But, um, you know, I uh, love God. I love God. And I want to worship him and thank him for everything in my life and that's including my ex-husband so um thank you guys so much for watching i hope this encourages you and i'll see you tomorrow if
not up in the air. I'll see you on another video. Bye.